construction on our new regulatory services building. I know everyone here is well acquainted with the great need for new facilities for this building, for this program. The program has been, in, been housed in the old agricultural experiment station for many years and that building has gotten to the point where it cannot be upgraded to meet uh, certain standards uh, for handling volatile chemicals and other uh, procedures that are necessary in a modern, up-to-date regulatory services program. So we have uh, worked with university officials and with the state legislature now for something like 10 years uh, developing plans and uh, securing finances to build this building. The 1986 legislature acted on the recommendation of the uh, University of Kentucky and President Singletary that this building be uh, funded, that uh, bonding for the building be approved. That was done in the 86 legislature and uh, we have had uh, an architect working almost continuously since that time developing the plans. We are now ready to start construction and we are delighted. I appreciate the big crowd that is here. I see so many people that have been uh, closely associated with this program for a long, long time. Uh, farmers and agribusinessmen that have uh, given uh, generously of their time in uh, helping us with the planning process, helping us with the legislative process, and uh, supporting us in uh, getting this building to this particular point. Uh, there are two people that I would like to introduce before we get started. Uh, Mrs. Bruce Poundstone uh, sitting here, uh, the wife of Bruce Poundstone, whom uh, was so responsible for this program being where it is today. Bruce was the director of this program through the uh, really uh, significant development uh, stages of the program. Uh, I don't remember how long he must have been director of the program, over 20 years, 25 years. And uh, I uh, had the opportunity to work with Bruce many of those 25 years and know what a professional he was and how hard he worked to make this the most professional regulatory service program in the country. He developed a training program that people came from all parts of the United States to train in our regulatory services department uh, and go back and uh, develop the same kind of programs in their home states. So, uh, Ms. Poundstone, it's very nice for you to be here this afternoon. I appreciate it. And, uh, I'm, I'm delighted that you could come. And I would like to introduce Mabel Wiles, who is sitting with Miss Poundstone. Uh, Mabel worked for more years than she admits to uh, 40 some years, I believe, perhaps in the uh, seed laboratory. And uh, she's uh, one of the uh, longer employees that I see uh, around in the audience. We have many employees of the Regulatory Services Department here and we're very pleased that you could be here. If I started introducing any other people other than these two ladies, I would be here all afternoon and uh, that's not the purpose uh, that we're here for. I uh, would like to introduce at this time and ask him to make some remarks. Uh, been supportive of this program, as he always was supportive of all of our ag programs. Uh, someone asked uh, Otis shortly uh, toward the end of his time around here if his dean of agriculture was any good, and he said he didn't know he'd never had but one. <laughs> so. Uh, I uh, 
Otis, please come up and say a few words at this occasion. You had as much to do with this as anyone. Thank you. I guess that, can you hear me all right about that? Well, uh, the reason I had only one dean is because I needed only one, and I had a good one, as you all would uh, agree. Charlie is right. Uh, this is another of those buildings where uh, perseverance is what paid off. We've been after it for a long time. It uh, finally uh, got in the right spot at the right time, and I'm happy to say uh, got funded in the last session. And I'm very pleased to, to see the, the groundbreaking now signifying the true beginning of the project uh, itself. Many people uh, don't know a lot about this part of the university. The, the, uh, the teaching function is well known, the but the service function of the university is frequently not understood or well understood by many people. And I see Elizabeth Pulliam here, who's also a leader of the University of Kentucky Band in a, in a slightly different sense. She heads our Extension Advisory Group and has been very helpful to us. We thank you all for being here. What uh, Dr. Singletary said about service, I think, deserves uh, uh, saying again. This is a particularly important kind of service that uh, the university is doing in this particular facility, regulatory services. You know, the university looks to form partnerships with Kentucky industry and Kentucky business and the Kentucky uh, government. And, and indeed with the people of Kentucky. And we think that on this particular interface where government is regulating industry for the university to assume a leadership role and a role in that regulatory process is, is, is particularly appropriate. We're delighted by that opportunity and we'll try to do it well to the benefit of government, industry, and the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Thanks again for being here. We look forward to this being a very, very fine facility and to serving the people of Kentucky even better. Thank you. We think this is a very important building. It's been a long time coming. We've had a lot of help from many of you in this audience, and we appreciate that very much. And seconding President Roselle's comments, we hope to do an even better job in the service area than we've been doing. And it's this kind of facility, which is really what a land-grant university is all about, and this kind of uh, crowd is really what a university is all about, and land-grant university particularly. <coughs> Thank you very much for all the help you've given us up to this point. This time I would like to introduce the architect, uh, Byron Romanowitz. As President Roselle has uh, indicated, uh, Byron is a man of uh, many talents, and he's uh, very good at all of them. He's a friend of mine, a person that I've known for a long time, and uh, I've enjoyed his music for years. He has a dance band here in town, and uh, he's a splendid musician. This is the first opportunity that our college has had to uh, enjoy his architectural talents. He's one of the most creative and imaginative architects in this part of the country, and we're delighted that he was selected to design this building, and I think it's going to be a real uh, centerpiece uh, in this part of the campus. would also like to introduce John Walker of my office, uh, who worked very closely with the architects. I had an old professor at Princeton one time said that any architect that had to stand in front of a, his building and explain it verbally didn't do his job in the first place. But this is a rather unusual building, so if you'll spare me a few moments, I'll tell you why we did what we did. It's very complex in its, uh, in its program, in the functions within the building, and in the equipment. And one of the characteristics of the equipment in this project that there, there is a lot of movement of air. The, the fume hoods coming out of the roof and air just moves through this building in great volume. So the, we attempted to take that, that basic function and to dramatize it, especially thinking, of course, that the building would be viewed from the stadium and uh, by an awful lot of people. So they'll be seeing it from the top 
We've tried to make the form strong and the roofs attractive. So what you see here, the wind will cooperate. Is a one-story building, red brick to match Shawnee Town. Basically, the exterior um, insulation system called Drive It is the uh, repository for all the ductwork and air movement. And then on top, we have three penthouses with all the equipment that exhausts the air. And these penthouses are triangular shaped and uh, very distinctive. And each one of them has at the top arranged in a geometrical order the uh, uh, ex exhaust um, ducts and wh what we think will be a, a nice pattern. So really that's the essence of the entire building. It's 29,000 square feet, approximately three million dollars and I want to thank at this time the great cooperation of the College of Architecture from Design and Construction, Warren Denny and Jim Wash and uh, uh, the engineers, CMTA Associates and our of course project architect Greg Dunbar. Thank you so much and I'll try to leave my saxophone at home whenever I can. Enjoy the party. <laughs>